All right, moving right along with what we know for electrodynamics, now we get into the induced electric field, which is where Faraday's results and Faraday's law has a large part to play. Um, a little conceptual backing here. Let's recall that when we were playing with magnetostatics, we just had a steady current. Faraday's law imposes that we have a changing magnetic field. So the field itself is changing, and so magnetostatics might have results that are, uh, oh, that they can only have results that are approximations. Um, so everything we see in this section is going to be what's called a, uh, it's non-steady, so it's going to be called a quasi-static approximation for these fields. And that's what we use to calculate the flux and things of that nature. So just be aware that it's the changing magnetic fields that induce the electric uh, field and uh, that's what we're at aiming for, but understand that the tools of magnetostatics aren't always going to approximate this as well as it can, depending on the limiting case, but for most things, they're negligible and we can use them. So with that, let's dive into this first question. A long solenoid with radius A and in turns per unit length carry time-dependent current I of T in the phi hat direction. Find the electric field, magnitude, and direction at a distance s from the axis, both inside and outside the solenoid, in the quasi-static approximation. There we see it. All right, so what do we need to know for this question? Well, the flux, of course, is the uh, area integral or the surface integral. And then Faraday's law says that, well, if we boil this down to where the charge isn't the case, but the magnetic field is changing or the flux changing, uh, we see that we get a line integral of E dot DL, which is the Amperian loop in this case. And we find that uh, D by DT of phi will give us what this electric field is. So let's see it in action. All right. We know that for a solenoid that the field is mu in, or excuse me, mu naught in I in the Z direction. So it's running inside. If the field is zero outside. Okay, this again is only the quasi-static case or the quasi-static appro approximation because the field is varying. Now let's note that here in the next step for something inside for an inferior loop of radius uh, less than a, phi is b dot da, which we know is just 0 to 2 pi, 0 to s, s bar, ds bar, d theta. And then we see that B is mu naught or mu naught in I, so we plugged it in. And we see that we just get the surface area of a circle. Again, solenoid makes sense. So pi s squared, good to go there. Now we use this in Faraday's law for the induced field. And we know that the Empyrean loop is just some circular loop. So we go uh, E dot DL, which uh, is E is in the... Uh, direction that we want, and we see that uh, DL is changing only in the theta direction, and we just get S by itself. So we get uh, 0 to 2 pi that way, at least for this DL segment. And we see that we get, again, surface area or the circumference of a circle, 2 pi S, physically makes sense. Now, the only thing that is changing with respect to time on the flux side of the equation is the current. So you see that d by dt gets attributed to the current only, and we have pi s's that cancel here on both sides, so we're good to go there. And we see that the induced field after the fact is mu naught in s over two, negative of course, Lenz's law has to restore the flux, di over dt in the phi hat direction. All right, so that's for inside. Now outside's gonna look pretty similar, but it's going to have a, uh, different uh, induced field. Um, okay, so for the flux, instead of having uh, b uh, pi s squared, we're going to have b pi a squared because a is the limiting factor on the solenoid. That is the radius of the solenoid. So the field, the flux can't go past where the field is. Again, we're zero outside, so everything has to be inside or at the boundary. Okay, we are neglecting the fringing field parts for this, but whatever. All right, so again, we see that we have mu naught ni times pi a squared. Pretty straightforward there. Applying this again for Faraday's law, we see that we have e on the circumference of the uh, on the circumference of the wire, which is two pi s, or the uh, inferior loop, excuse me. And then here we have negative d by dt of 
the flux, which again, the only thing that changes with respect to time is the current. So let's go ahead and solve for E, attribute the D by DT to the current only, and we see that we divide by two pi S. So only this time, the only thing that's cancels are those pi's. So once we simplify this, we see that E is equal to negative mu naught N A squared over two S instead of over two, like we saw in the beginning. And again, DI, DT, in the fiat direction. So slightly different, but still a good example of this.